Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and in this episode of Practical Parallelism in C++, we're going to be talking about the basics of MPI. Uh, we're going to do this from a more visual view, that way, you know, what we've written already in terms of MPI code, we understand it a little uh, a little better, right, a little more visually. And so, the, the main idea is that there's a big difference between how we can do parallel programming, uh, like we've already seen kind of before. So there's really these two different styles, right? There's this single process, multiple thread style, and this multiple process style. Now, multiple uh, single process, multiple threads is going to be something like pthreads, right? And the, the key advantage here is that everything's in the same address space, which means that different threads can access, uh, they can share data just through loads and stores. Uh, so they're going to, so this has this idea of shared memory, right? So we've got all of these threads that have their own private local variables, but then they can all talk to this, you know, big chunk of shared memory. And so again, pthreads is an example of this. Now, once we move to something like message passing uh, interface, so MPI, we're talking about something that's multi-process. Uh, and with something that's multi-process, each process is going to have its own address space, mean, meaning things like loads and stores aren't going to work as far as passing things. Now, I'll just leave a little caveat in here that modern MPI, talking about, I believe, MPI 3 has a shared memory model. Uh, but, you know, the key thing with you know, message passing, though, is this idea that we have to use point-to-point -point communication and if we want to share data, we've got to send that data over via, via a message. And we can't just do, say, a load or a store. And so each process is going to be running their own application with their own address space. So before we get into you know, the guts of you know, what are the basic operations of MPI and how we communicate, we should talk about parallel programming fundamentals. So parallel programming can really be broken up into four major steps, which are decomposition, assignment, and orchestration. Uh, or assignment, orchestration, and mapping. So we start out with a sequential computation, right? So this will be our sequential code. So it'll be maybe Gaussian elimination. Now, Gaussian elimination will break up and we'll say, okay, well, I've got some, you know, each of these things can really be broken up into different phases, right? So what I'll do is I'll break this up into individual tasks, right? So I can break up my problem to say, okay, well, these rows are all doing this operation. Uh, but the later rows are doing the same operation. So why don't I just break up the different rows, right? So we'll, in the decomposition phase, we're breaking up our big sequential computation into smaller chunks of that original computation, right? So this is turning into these little individual tasks, right? So that's decomposition. Then the next thing we have is assignment. So like I said, we've got multiple different processes uh, as, as kind of shown right here. And what we're going to do in the assignment phase is we're going to say, okay, well, how should we break up these tasks or assign these tasks to the different processes, right? So if these are the rows of a matrix, right? So which rows should go where? So we saw in our example in MPI of two different ways of mapping uh, Gaussian elimination uh, rows to processes. One of them we saw, we just did block stripe mapping. So we, we just assigned a contiguous chunk of rows, right, to a process. And then in, in the other way, the cyclic stripe mapping version, we sent you know, a strided amount of rows to each process. So if we had two ranks, you know, one rank would get all the even rows, the other rank would get all the odd rows. We saw that it, this really helped with workload balancing. right? So that's what we're doing in assignment. Now, the next thing we have is orchestration. So now that we, act, now that we have our, um, our data mapped to our processes, the next important thing we need to do is how are these different processes going to talk to each other, right? So at this point, we basically have our parallel program, right? And this is very important, um, you know, the orchestration side of things, especially once you get to very large problems. Once you get to very large problems that are distributed not just on, you know, a single multi-core chip, but you're talking about multiple nodes, communication becomes one of the leading overheads, right? And then, then finally, what you end up having is uh, after you have your parallel program, you have your parallel program gets mapped to physical hardware, right? So uh, in the mapping stage, we're mapping our parallel program onto physical hardware, right? So the processors, right? And this, this is another level that we, have to con that we have to consider of where is our application getting mapped onto the physical hardware? And we wanna do it in such a way that, you know, the distance that we have for communication, you know, is, is minimized. Right, so as you can see that there's a lot of different design decisions along the way. So how do you break up your problem during decomposition? Where do you assign your tasks? Uh, how are your different processes going to communicate with each other? And how are you gonna map these things to hardware? Right, so there's a lot of design decisions. And of course the question is which one is the right one?
Now there's some intuitive things that you know we can we can come up with in terms of um, you know say block stripe mapping versus cyclic stripe mapping. It kind of intuitively makes sense of why that's better for load balancing, but with something like mapping, right, and figuring out how much work should be given uh, to each processor, that's something that you know a lot of times that requires some you know manual tuning. Okay, so now that we've kind of gone over the basics of parallel programming, we should talk a little bit about the fundamentals of MPI and how we communicate in MPI. And so this, of course, starts with communicators. So with communicators, we start off with this base communicator called MPI COM World. Now, MPI, MPI COM World is just going to be a collection of all of your processes or ranks, right? So they're all going to live in this MPI COM World, right? And it's basically a logical organization of processes. But you know the key thing here is that not all processes need to talk to each other. So if we consider a situation like this, where maybe let's do, use a different color, maybe you know each row inside of you know this you know kind of grid that we've made, maybe they don't need to talk to um, the other rows, or maybe they need to talk to the other rows very rarely. Maybe after some giant long computation, they need to pass some values between each other. So it doesn't make sense if you had something like a broadcast to broadcast it to everybody in MPI COM world. So you can actually uh, split a communicator into smaller communicators, right? So you don't have to just use MPI COM world. You can split this into, you know, four different communicators, one for each row. And then you can also have intercommunicator communication if you still need that, uh, right? And so in simple cases that we've seen so far, uh, at least in my examples for MPI, we've just used MPI COM world. Um, just because you know just for simplicity and it still worked but in you know very large scale cases you're definitely not going to just want to use MPI com world in broadcast values that aren't being used um, by other ranks okay so the next thing is actually sending um, sending messages uh, within a communicator right so we you know as we kind of said earlier this idea of point to point communication right so we've got this MPI send here and this is a blocking send that will send a message, right? So we'll have some buffer, we'll have some data, we'll specify how much data we're sending, and we'll specify a receiver, right? So the receiver on the other side, you know, will receive this message, right? And it's a blocking send, we have to wait for this message to be received. So just like there's MPI send, there's also MPI receive. So, you know, we're going to receive on rank from uh, the sender, right? And we're going to receive this message. And again, we're talking about a blocking operation here. Right, and again, point-to-point -point communication. So, you know, this is going between two processes only, right? For MPI send and MPI receive. Now, a lot of times we don't just want to send something to, you know, one particular process. So, in the case of Gaussian elimination, we had, you know, say a row that we wanted to give to every other process, right? And so, if we want to broadcast, there's a broadcast. Uh, which is this MPI B cast, which stands for broadcast. Now with MPI B cast, it tackles a problem of what if we need to send the same data to multiple ranks? And I'll, I'll emphasize here, same data, right? So everyone is going to get the same chunk of data, right? So this doesn't have to be one data element. This could be some big contiguous, uh, you know, array that we're sending to everybody. So what broadcast will do will, is that we'll broadcast to all other ranks in the communicator and we'll define a root process. So in this case, our root, is going to be rank zero. So this is the only process where uh, the send buffer is significant, right? And that's because, you know, the actual data is being sent from the root. And the key idea here is that we've got some block of data and it gets distributed to everybody. So after we do this MPI broadcast, rank zero, one, two, and three all have this data in that buffer. Now, if there's a way to send, uh, you know, just one chunk of data, well, a lot of times what I'm trying to send is not necessarily uh, the same data to everybody, but I've got some regular strided data that I want to send to everybody. So that's why I've got uh, scatter, right? So the MPI scatter. So let's say I've got this original array, right? So element zero, one, two, and three. Now with MPI scatter, um, what I end up doing is I'll select some stride, right? And so I'll send say in elements to each process and it will be, uh, what it will do is it will take a strided, um, a strided portion of that array and send it to everybody. So rank zero, we'll say get the zeroth element, considering if we're just doing, you know, maybe a stride of one, 
uh, rank one will get the first, rank two will get the second, and rank three will get the third, right? So basically I've distributed this array to all the different ranks, but not the same data, I've given individual pieces of data. And just like with MPI broadcast, the send buffer is only significant at the root, the root still being rank zero in this case, right? And that's just because, you know, a lot of times what we'll end up doing is say rank zero will initialize our problem for us. It'll maybe open some file, read it in, maybe read in some giant matrix, and then it will send that matrix out to all the other ranks in the communicator. And the key idea again is just we're scattering the data based upon some stride that we're specifying. Now, if there's a way to send data in some strided fashion to all the different ranks in the communicator, well, clearly there's going to be some you know, want or need to get that data back. Right, and that's why we have MPI gather. So MPI gather uh, works kind of the same way as MPI scatter, but in reverse. So again, if we can send data by some stride, we should be able to gather it uh, in the same way. Uh, so in this time we're gathering from each rank. So again, we've got um, our original data that's distributed. So let's say this is index zero, one, two, three, right? So uh, what we end up doing is we'll do, we'll say scatter, we'll say what a stride is, and we'll collect that information from a buffer in everybody's, um, in every other rank, right? So we'll wind up with the, you know, an array of length four, right? With everybody's data in it, except this buffer right here, right? So this buffer, this is only significant at the root. So we don't need to allocate some, you know, if we're collecting some giant, uh, matrix or something, maybe it's some, you know, 1024 by 1024, 2048 by 2048 uh, matrix or something, we don't need to allocate that on every single rank that can only be significant um, at the root and which again, in this case is going to be uh, rank zero for everyone else it can just be a null pointer. Right, so what are some conclusions that we can base on this, right? So there's a lots of different ways to do the same thing. Right, which means we've got lots of decisions to make. So should we use uh, a broadcast? Or should we instead use you know point-to-point -point communication? You know, you can always make the argument of well, broadcast is the exact same thing as point-to-point point-to-point communication. I can, you know, synthesize a broadcast via just sending a bunch of messages. It turns out using broadcast is much faster than doing this. But then you run into well, what if I don't need to broadcast to everybody? Should I still use broadcast? Um, what if I need to use it for everybody in the communicator minus one? Should I still use broadcast then? What about if it's only half the people of the communicator? Should I use a broadcast or should I use a send? Right, so there's a lot of questions that we have to answer. And then of course, uh, I, I will by no means say that this is a comprehensive coverage of MPI. So again, we didn't talk about shared memory MPI, working with groups or things like MPI all gather. So if we go back to gather, Right? Maybe we don't just want the final data being in one rank, maybe you want the final data going to all ranks, right? So with something like MPI all gather, it would be gathered into all ranks instead of just a root rank, right? So, uh, but this is going to be kind of your ba basic coverage of MPI and parallel programming. And, and this should you know, give you enough knowledge to at least you know, kind of begin your journey down you know, message passing parallel programming design patterns. All right, so feel free to download any of this stuff, uh, any of the code on github.com slash coffee before arch. So all this code is in the practical parallelism in C++ uh, repo. So feel free to check that out if it'll go ahead and load for me. So here we go, right? So we've got, you know, basics of MPI. So we've got some, you know, very simple MPI code here. And then in parallel algorithms, we've got MPI uh, implementations of Gaussian elimination. So we can check out that right here and you can see, you know, an actual use case of something like uh, MPI scatter, uh, MPI broadcast, and then also down here, we've got MPI gather, right? So if you want to see actual use cases of MPI programming, feel free to check that out as well. But that's going to do it for today. I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.